call on Neil McAvoy to introduce the short debate. Today I stand here as a Welshman fight, fighting for democracy here in Wales. Wales needs a people's parliament, sovereign and legislating in the Welsh national interest. It's an old concept called democracy. In this debate, we have direct democracy in action. I wanted the public out there to decide what should be discussed today. So on social media, we ask constituents to tell us what they wanted to talk about. There were a load of interesting comments from constituents, and I'd like to thank all those who took part. George Atkinson spoke of the need for devolved media and policing. Chris Piper wants the Welsh Assembly to have more authority with law and order. Matt Davis and Sue Fortune want to see better transport links in Wales. And Joanne Davis is calling for a ban on biodegradable products. All were great suggestions. But the most popular comment came from the Welsh independent memes for angry Welsh teens. We have a few of those in here sometimes. They want to discuss a sovereign Wales. So the title of today's debate is A Sovereign Wales, Building a Proud, Sovereign and United Country that Wales can and should be. I would add today that the nation Wales will be. I'm advised by the research department that there is no record of a formal debate on Welsh sovereignty in this assembly before. Well, it's about time, isn't it? I'm proud to be the first AM to hold a short debate on Welsh sovereignty, and I'm even more proud that it was the public who put this on the agenda today. Grassroots activism is fundamental to Welsh democracy, and it's why I'm here. The great fault line in Welsh politics today is between those who see Cardiff as our preeminent capital city and those who see London as that. I know where I stand. Wales has a great history. We were one of the first countries in Europe to have a civil law system under Haudar as far back as the 10th century. Owen Glyndwr, the great visionary of the 14th and 15th century, saw Wales as a country with its place in the world with a parliament that he set up well before parliaments were the norm. During the American Revolution, there were more signatories to the Declaration of Independence from Wales than from any other country. The Rebecca riots down west, on this very day in 1839, the toll gate was destroyed at Evile Wen. We had the Merthyr Rising and the Chartists in Newport, all Welsh people thirsting for sovereignty. I'm a sovereignist, and I want to live in a sovereign Wales, where we are sovereign as individuals, as communities and as a nation. Sovereignty means bringing governance closer to the people, making government an engine for the desires and aspirations of the people. Good government, a good democracy, is a way to channel the ideas and energy of us all. And it's not some aloof body which merely dictates to people. Everyone here owns a house. But does anyone here let their next door neighbour manage their budget? Keep their salaries, put the money in a bank account that's, that you can't access, not allow you to speak to your neighbours and to speak to your neighbours on your behalf. Of course this doesn't happen on an individual level. So why do we allow it to happen on a national level? Wales can stand on its own two feet, but more than that, we have a duty and responsibility to govern our own country. There are 100 sovereign nations in the world, smaller than Wales. Five out of ten of the wealthiest per capita countries in the world have a population less than Wales. All the wealthiest per capita countries in the world top ten have populations under six million. And seven countries in the European Union have a smaller population than us in Wales. In Wales, because our economy is bad, our young, talented and economically active people have to leave and they're replaced by older, economically inactive people because Wales is a cheaper, more beautiful place to retire. The best thing that we can do about this is to become 
wealthy. A sovereign Welsh Parliament here in Cardiff will enable Wales to become wealthy. Sovereignty is a process which has already begun. We must push on and assume more powers challenging Westminster. A sovereign Wales could have fair taxation with a land value tax. We could legislate on radical, fair distribution of land. We could generate income on people coming into Wales with a tourist tax. A truly sovereign parliament could empower people to create businesses and make sure that business is easy and quick to do in Wales. A minimum income could be seriously considered. We could take care of need and not punish people for being poor. We're such an entrepreneurial people. The first million pound deal on the planet was done in Cardiff, just a stone's throw from this assembly in the old coal exchange. In the past, when our children needed education, we were the first to set up schools. Griffith Jones and his famous circulating schools, which by 1761 had made Wales the most literate country in the world. Workers also established institutes, institutes across our nation with theatres and libraries and ways of helping each other. And who can forget the success in modern times of Tower Colliery. People coming together, working together, taking a chance and being successful. Now Tower Colliery was doomed to closure until workers took it over as a cooperative and it made profit for years. No one is going to change Wales for us. We have to get together and do it ourselves. The post-Brexit scenario for farming in Wales looks bleak. A sovereign parliament could take a lead making cannabis a new growth industry. There are so many medicinal uses for the plant and it's an emerging industry in many parts of the world. A sovereign Wales could control our own natural resources and crucially derive income from them. I've had enough of seeing our natural resources being plundered and given away. Our water is taken away and sold back to us. Our houses are bought up en masse and rented back to us. It's a time for the circular economy of localism with an end to neoliberalism and an end to austerity. Sovereign Estonia has just introduced free travel for everybody in that country. Why? Because 75% of the population voted for it. Sovereignty brings options. In Wales right now, we don't even have the power to ensure that our children can travel to school safely because we're unable to legislate on putting seatbelts on service buses. A sovereign Wales would have an independent legal jurisdiction. And in a sovereign Wales, every, everyone would have a stake. Every citizen would have rights and responsibilities with a radical equality for all. Every state in the USA has a constitution. So why not Wales? The criminal justice system can be based on fairness and rehabilitation. No super prisons, less inmates, but toughness when required. A sovereign Wales could have control over energy policy. We're already more than self-sufficient with electricity. We could invest in renewables, tidal lagoons, not nuclear, and we could export electricity, once again deriving a profit. A sovereign Welsh Parliament could usher in a green revolution with energy, clean energy, costing us pennies every month instead of the for small fortune that it does. And that would have a knock-on effect of making our businesses and industries more competitive. A sovereign Wales could re reinvent and revive mining, but in a virtual sense, with the mining of digital currencies, making a profit in a new 21st century industry. Wales has so much potential. We're a strong and resilient nation, and the last 800 years have proved that. In these islands, we need to turn democracy on its head, bottom up instead of top down. We should enable sovereign parliaments in Wales, England and Scotland with further democracy emerging through those parliaments. Democratic renewal from communities up, decentralist in nature. On certain matters, it would make sense for our nations to share sovereignty, but it would be for the people of those nations to decide. I'll finish with a story about a bus trip I went on in Iceland where we were passing some mountains and on the left I could see them and the guide picked up a microphone and s explained that in 1935 Iceland was the, the poorest country in Europe and they were so poor back then that people lived in caves 
in the mountains that she was pointing at. But then she explained in 1944, Iceland became a sovereign country, breaking Danish domination. And she said that in Iceland then, they had a government making decisions in the interests of the people of Iceland, planning for Iceland and not Denmark. And she proudly stated that Iceland is now one of the wealthiest countries in the world per head of population. Nobody on that bus thought the woman was a nationalist and she didn't claim to be. She was a normal woman wanting the best for her family, for her community and her country. Just like all of us do who believe in sovereignty for Wales. Diochendal.